This is a 2008 Polaris Sportsman 500. It's a fuel injected. I happen to have one in my shop over there. This is a carbureted it's 05. I've done a top end. Uh, I'm setting valve clearance or valve lash. The crankshaft goes around twice. Each time the camshaft goes around once. You got to make sure the piston is the top dead center, meaning you know the piston goes like this up and down. When it's all the way up, the rod pushes it up. Then there's a moment it don't move, and then the rod pivots on the crank, and the rod pulls the piston down. Right when it's in that in between mark, you're at absolute top dead center. What you want to do with I spin it over with your recoil starter or the crank, it don't matter how you turn it over with the spark plug out. Watch these intake valves open and watch them shut. And right after they shut and quit moving, then you want to bring your piston up to top. You can put it. I, I put a. I put a long skinny screwdriver in this plug hole. You got to be careful. You can scratch and beat stuff up, but just be real. Just be careful with it. The piston will try to kind of grab the screwdriver as you go on these type engines where everything's at an angle to the piston. So you just lightly kind of bring the screwdriver up, and you can look. You can look down there and see the piston. And you bring it on up to where this is pointing straight up. See that dowel pin on the camshaft? There you go. When it's in line here, it's up. There's timing marks here you can use. But it's just got to be right after the intake valves shut. Then you bring your piston up to top. Loosen these 10 millimeter nuts and you got screwdriver slots. I've already done it, but I'm just going to tell you, show you. Uh, I, meant to sh I meant to make the video doing it, but I forgot to. Anyway, that's the, that's the very end of the valve and that's the end of the rocker arm. You put the feeler gauge right between those two. Just loosen the shit up till you can get it in there. Six thousandths. And you can slide it. And you tighten it up with your other hand until you can't slide it. I do it to where if I can't pull it out easily with two fingers, it's too tight. So I back it off to where I can. And then I'll turn it backwards just a little bit more and tighten up your nut. And you're good, but you got to hold it while you're tightening your nut. Your nut will try to turn your adjuster also. And it's okay if it's a little bit tighter or a little bit looser. It don't got to be absolutely perfectly six thousandths. It's better if it's a little, a little bit loose. And, and I, I mean, you could run seven thousandths all day long and you're good. It needs to be damn close, but it don't got to be exactly dead nuts on the money. And on the exhaust here, I'm probably really messed up your video now. It's got the little three millimeter flats. You can do that with a needle nose, a pair of pliers, or if you have the tool like I've got here. This will hold the nuts still for you. You take this. And put it on and then you can drop this on the nut and that'll hold the nut for you while you do your adjusting I don't particularly like these I don't like the feel I don't have I don't like the feel I have in them I like to use a screwdriver I mean a pair of pliers or needle nose I'll use that tool I showed you to get it loose and to adjust it and get it close but when I'm really getting down to the money I like using a pair of pliers and a feeler gauge. Same thing. 
do it like this. If it gets or it won't come out, that's a little tight. Back it off a little bit. And then always, it's going to try to tighten when you tighten your lock nut. And I back it up just a little bit, tighten it up, and you're good. Hear that? That's the free play code. You'll get to where you know that feel. You'll know how much that feels. Like if I was checking this for a customer, I'd feel it. And I'd know it's a good. I know that's right. And I don't got a feeler gauge. It. I know what it is. I know that's that's right at six thousandths. Both sides on this engine, both sides six thousandths. And that's it. On the shell under bucket style, the more high performance engines, you have a bucket sitting over the valve spring and a shelm in there and you feeler gauge it write down what you got and then do your math to know what you need and that's how much you change your shelm if it's three thousandths too tight then you take three thousandths out of your shelm typically what happens is exhaust valves seemingly almost never change the intake valves constantly hammer up and pull themselves higher and higher into the head. Deeper and deeper. Let me get an old one here. Uh, say this is in the head. It opens and shuts. But it's got that spring. So every time, if you will, it's slamming shut. And over time, it just slams up higher. This is dramatic higher and higher into the head and that makes this clearance tighter and tighter and it, it will definitely I say it all the time every day it'll get so tight it holds the valve open you lose compression you have no power they won't even run countless of them countless times I've adjusted the valves the customer gets it oh my god it's never ran this away <laughs> well it has but they tighten up slowly over time and you don't realize it you just don't realize it. So if you're going to check anything, check the intake valves. You need to check the exhaust while you're at it. But uh, the intakes, they slowly... See this profile here? This angle here, it looks good. It looks straight. That's still a pretty good looking valve. That's actually the exhaust valve that came out of this engine. I put new valves in it while I was at it. Now, yeah, it had water on it, moisture. If you look real hard, you can see this surface is cupped out. It goes up, and then it swoops, and then and up. It's hammered where it sit there, pow, 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 hammering on the head. And distorts it. It's, you call it, yeah. You know, you'd take it out, show your customer, look, your valves are hammered. So you put new valves in it and cut the, recut the valve seats if needed. The cutters don't cost much. And, uh, many times, the seats are fine. The valves are dead. So uh, don't be afraid. To put new valves and always new seals in yourself. And you, you, with the head off of the machine, you put this intake port straight up and put, pour your naphtha in there, your part's cleaner. If it don't run out on the valves, you're good. And you can blue it and, and do all that. Valve, cutting valves and valve seats is a science all of its own that I've never really worried about. I just make them right. I don't. None of us here are messing with one-tenth of one horsepower. It doesn't concern me. All my stuff runs good, <laughs> right? You just, get, you just get it right. I think, I think, in my opinion, a lot of people go much too far with all this stuff. But this is right and tight and solid. See this? You can see six thousandths right here. You see that? See that? Six thousands. 
and you're good and feel free to comment I repair stuff you can ship me stuff heads carbs whatever I do it all uh, you can ask me I'll, I'll leave comments and I'll answer them I've never not answered anybody and I've got other videos I've made on this exact machine and but it all it's all very similar that's how you do the valves on all of them pretty much I've got a cam chain tensioner, how to check for if your cam chains wore out or not on there. So we're good.